Hi, in this video I'm going to show you a little on how to do some uh, AI wandering. In this case I'm just going to do some zombie wandering. Maybe in the next tutorial I'm going to do some waypoint sort of wandering. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to showcase uh, the zombies if you haven't seen them before in my game. So you can see uh, this sort of behavior. So as you may be able to see, the zombies are, you know, randomly wandering around. Um, yeah, I don't want to... Uh, there, for example, there's one that stopped there. Uh, he saw me, anyways. But they randomly, you know, wander and then they may stop. There's another one that stopped right about there. Uh, and yeah, that's my companion. Um, but yeah, we're going to just do, you know, some random wandering uh, for the capsule. Um, kill this guy here. So yeah, let's get to do that. Okay, so here I am in the Unity Editor. And well, the first thing I want to do is so we can play around a little bit more. I'm going to make this our floor plane a little bigger because it's not giving us that much space to move around. I guess that would be okay. Um, and the next thing would be uh, to rebake the navigation mesh because the mesh is uh, in the center where it was before. So if we go and bake it again, now it's updated to the entire plane size. Okay, so um, to start first we need to open our AI example script which I have here um, and we're gonna want to do a new function and this function is going to basically return the position of the wandering position where the zombie is going to do. Since wandering randomly requires a random position we're gonna calculate this random position and this function. So we're gonna make a public. It's gonna be. It's gonna return a position. So it's gonna return a vector three, and we're gonna just call it. Uh, I don't know random nav mesh point or random wander point. I guess. There. Um, the next thing that we want to do is uh, first we need to assign we need to create a f local variable of type vector3 and this is going to be the random point and we're going to assign uh, a random inside unit sphere uh, variable function to this you're going to see how this works basically we uh, make it a random dot inside unit sphere and this basically this variable uh, creates a random vector3 inside a sphere of radius 1 like it says here to make it a bigger radius we could uh, multiply this function by a variable for example we could uh, I guess let's make a variable here for example let's call it a uh, let's make it up here we're gonna call it public float wander radius and I guess let's make it 3 I guess it's not too big our wandering plane so yeah so if this makes um, a random inside unit sphere inside you know a radius one sphere so if we want to make it I don't know radius three we multiply it by three we're gonna multiply it by wander radius so yeah and then the next thing is um, this uh, this sphere is made in the zero origin of our world to make it in, in, in a different origin we need to add our vector so we're gonna put this inside a parenthesis and we're gonna add a new vector 3 which would be origin in this case it would be our transform dot position so yeah we have that 3 so this is going to calculate a random position within a sphere so if we go to our project, let's imagine, I don't know, we can use a... I'm gonna add a... Don't do this, I'm just gonna use do this to showcase. I'm gonna add a, a sphere collider. And you can put a radius here. So if I put a radius 3, we can sort of see, you know, the sphere collider. Uh, so let's imagine, we can uh, imagine this is, you know, the radius of a wandering... Uh, zombie so it's going to be randomly I uh, select a random point within this radius now I'm looking at it it looks kind of small so maybe uh, let's try five 
uh, that looks a little, maybe a little more. Seven, seven. I like seven. So yeah, we're gonna change our uh, default value of wander radius to seven. Um, so yeah, basically what it's gonna do, it's gonna select a random point within the sphere. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna remove this collider, which is just to show, and we're getting a an error. I'm gonna fix that now. Um, so next thing we need to do is use a nav mesh head. Basically, this uh, lets us select a point within the nav mesh. Uh, we're gonna use the nav mesh that sample position function. Sample position, and we're gonna input our random point, our, which would be the, you know the source position. This basically what it does is it grabs a random point and it's going to return the closest point on the nav mesh to that point. That way our our point is more precise and we don't I don't know get, you know, a a wander position outside the nav mesh. So uh, random point and it also needs a hit. We're going to make you put the out variable to this nav hit. So out nav hit. Then our, we're asking for a distance. Uh, I guess wander radius could work. Um, and yeah, a negative one would be all uh, layers. Um, actually, what am I doing? Yeah, we uh, close this. And then we return a new vector three. So we're gonna do a nav hit dot position dot x. Remember that since our plane is only on the z and x position, we don't need a y because a random y point would indicate different elevations and we're just in one plane. So we're gonna not uh, calculate a random point on the y position. Actually, we're just going to return the uh, origin point, meaning our transform that position, which is the origin of the y. Uh, so we're going to put transform dot position dot y. And z, we also want a random z point. So I'm going to copy and paste this over here. And we're going to replace this with z. Okay, so basically this returns the random position that we want inside the nav mesh. Okay, let's see if that compiles. Yes. Okay, so that's just a function to calculate the random wander point. Now we actually need to move the the zombie towards there. So if we go into our void update, we can see we have an if is aware we chase the player with agent .set destination and else we just uh, search for player but also aside from searching for player we need uh, to wander I guess so we're gonna because currently it it stays static in place it does not move so we're gonna wanna make it wander um, we can make a function wander down here wander and here basically what we want to do is uh, check if check if we're following a waypoint and we don't we just create a new one using this uh, function so we're going to need a private variable actually I'm going to separate these two I'm going to put a private variable of type uh, vector 3 and this would be our wander point this will be the point where we where we are currently wandering to so um, in wander if and when I make it I don't know we have to make it equal to something at the beginning so we're gonna make it equals this is vector 3.0 so wander point vector 3.0 no, actually, we probably want to make this, no, a random wander point. There we go. Yeah. 
So basically when we start, we may we assign a random water point. The next thing we want to do if um, our distance, we need to do a check for distance from our player to the wander point. So if vector three dot distance and we put a the first one would be our transform. The next one would be our wander point dot no actually just your wander point is smaller than 0.5f if we're very close to it meaning if we got to our wander point then we want to make another wander point so this is going to repeat itself create wander point zombie go to wander point when we get to the wander point make another random wander point wander to that point when we reach that wander point create another wander point and go in that is infinite cycle it just if it goes to a wander point once it gets there it creates another one and so on so yeah um so if we got to our wander point, we want to make a new wander point. Uh, in this case, if we reached our wander point, we want to make wander point equals uh, random wander point. Um, yeah. Um, and the next and the, the last thing we want to do is if in, an else here, meaning if we have not reached our wander point, we want to make uh, the agent dot set destination wander point. So if we have not reached it, move towards the wander point. If we have reached it, make a new wander point. And once it changes new wander point, it's far away again, so we need to reach it again, and so on. This will infinitely loop itself. So we're gonna want to put our wander function here. And yeah, I think that should work. Let's go check that out. Uh, let's let it compile. And let's move our zombie to one side. E or, I don't know, somewhere around there. Let's see what happens. Huh. He's not moving. Okay, I'm back. So after testing a little bit, um, if we go to our uh, check on the distance, I made the threshold be two. I, if you want to be careful when you're checking if a place, uh, if anything reaches place, you want to probably make give it a little bit of threshold so it doesn't have to be in the exact point to reach it. So I made it instead of equal 0 0.5, smaller than 0 0.5 or one, make it smaller than two and that sort of works. So um, I'm gonna show you how this works now. If we go to our scene view, you can see him randomly wandering around. So what's cool is he's wandering around. However, if we go within his line of sight at some point, he should see us. As soon as he sees us, he starts chasing us. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's basically uh, basic AI. Um, so yeah, we can still continue adding stuff to this guy, but um, yeah. Maybe able to see. Maybe we could uh, make him uh, wander a little bit slower. And you can change the speed and the nav agent instead of 3.5. Let's give it a 1.5. He was like, I think, going too fast. See how that works. I don't know. That's a little slower. Really depends. If it's a slow zombie, that sort of works. Uh, but that might be too slow for other sorts of AI. So yeah. Well, that's really all there is to it. Next tour, I'm going to show you how to make a wandering, but with waypoints, uh, in case you need like an AI wandering in specific places at some point. Uh, so yeah, well, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something. Until the next time.